First of all, we have to thank our friends at the Duluth Coffee Company for supporting coffee with the Bulldogs. Maddie Rooney, uh, Bulldog graduate from the Leibovitz School of Business, uh, four-year women's hockey player for us, uh, record-holding netminder, and uh, also won a little thing called a gold medal with the uh, USA Hockey a few years back. So Mad, so excited to have you here. Also, most importantly, you survived my marketing class, which I give you a lot of credit for. Um, you were you were smart enough to uh, to navigate that, but uh, great to have you. A Duluth Coffee Company will be sending you some coffee and, and this fancy tumbler here, but it's good to see you, my friend, and welcome and thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me on. And your class was definitely one of my favorite senior year. So thank you. Oh, good. Well, um, um, you're, I, I appreciate you saying that, even if it's not true. So, um, so you know, I, I guess, Matt, just start off. What, what are you up to? Obviously, you've got hockey continuing to be in your future. Um, tell us what you're doing right now and, and how you're handling COVID and your training and your coaching. But just give everybody an update of, of what you're up to. Yeah, um, so I graduated college this spring virtually. Um, kind of took a break from hockey as it was kind of forced with the ring shut down, but it was also, I found it to be a good mental break that I probably wouldn't have taken if COVID didn't happen. So um, I tried to put my energy towards different resources and tools that I wouldn't have necessarily had the time for, such as trying to develop mental skills, um, vision training, things that I can do as, as a goalie outside the rink. Um, and then eventually I got back on the ice. We were able to start mid-May about down here in the cities. So things right now, um, practice-wise, are kind of back to normal for me. I train about three times a week on the ice, um, following all the guidelines uh, with camps and competitions. Obviously, everything's kind of postponed right now until more into the fall and winter. But um, yeah, off-ice training has been going well, too. I'm kind of just doing what I can here, keep trucking along and waiting to, uh, for things to get back on track. So we were, we were chatting a little bit before we got started here today. Uh, a, a lot of the USA hockey events and the international competitions have been postponed or canceled. And, um, you know, you said your philosophy right now is to just be ready for whenever that gets going. So how are you doing that? Right. Um, so with the national team girls, there's actually a lot of us in Minnesota here. There's about eight to 10 of us. And so we skate about three times a week together, um, which is just great to be playing amongst them. And so that's definitely preparing me for when I'm back into that team environment. Um, off ice training, I still do the same thing. I go about five days a week and then skating, I'm doing three times a week. Um, one time on the ice is goalie specific. And then the other times are with the national team girls and some of the PWHPA members that I'll be playing with as well in the fall. But Yep, so PWHPA tryouts have been postponed and also uh, USA camp and tryouts have been postponed at the moment. But when we get the call, I'll be ready and we'll be ready to go. Well, I, I think those of us that have, have watched you play and followed your career and been fortunate enough to be, be around you, Mads, I think we all know that uh, you're, all, you're always ready and uh, that's one of your strengths. So uh, I, don't, I don't doubt at all that uh, when, when you do get the call, you'll be lacing them up and, and ready to roll. Uh, talk a little bit about the state of professional women's hockey. There's been some changes there, uh, some, some progress, and, and what, where, where do you see it going in the next couple of years? Obviously, COVID came at a bad time because I do think that there was uh, some consolidation and there was some movement, and, and I was really encouraged about the future opportunities that our, our Bulldogs and, and collegiate women uh, student-athletes would have across the country. Where do you see it now, and, and where do you hope it gets to in the next couple of years? Right. So for me personally, and I know I speak for a lot of us uh, going into professional hockey and professional players that we do believe one league has to eventually come into play in order for the growth of women's hockey to be the best. Um, so I do also think, like you said, COVID kind of uh, diminished a little bit of that progression here. Um, I think things were going in that direction and we were, we're going to get back from the NHL, hopefully that's also one of our main goals um, and what I think will allow us to fully um, progress in that sense. But um, I don't want to bash on the NWHL. I mean, it is a great option for players who are just out of college or want to continue to keep playing hockey. Um, but I do think the PWHPA um, biasly is <laughs> the better route. Um, but 
I hope that soon with in like the next two years or so, three years, five years, that there is one league. And I think that will be our best option. And hopefully we can get back, to, like I said, by the NHL. Well, and, and we look forward to seeing you playing professionally. I'm, sh I'm sure that's going to happen sooner than later uh, as, as the COVID world and, and the professional world of women's hockey um, figure, figure some things out because there's certainly plenty of challenges in the world these days. And from an Olympic standpoint, professional sports are, are so important to uh, honing the craft of our, our, um, our professional athletes to represent the, the U.S. and all the respective countries. And I know that was one of the reasons that, that your Olympic teammate, Sid Morin, went over to Europe because she felt like that was the best place for her, at least what she's told me, to be ready to compete at the international level because the league over there um, simply was more demanding and, and uh, gave her a greater opportunity to stay sharp and, and have her skills. So it's, it's good to hear that there's some momentum and, and hopefully we can navigate those, those challenges. Uh, so talk a little bit about um, your high school days. We know you're the, the pride of Andover, right? And, but talk a little bit. About, I've heard a few stories about uh, you playing on the boys team and, and congratulations on all the success you had before you came to UMD. But talk a little bit about what that was like. Yeah, um, I, so I played boys youth hockey up until my sophomore year of high school. And then I made the decision to go play two years of girls high school. Um, went to the state tournament as a junior and took consolation. It was just a great experience. Still one of my favorite hockey memories to this day was playing in the tourney. Um, junior year went well with the girls as well. Um, but my, ultimately my senior year, I decided to play for the boys. And it was kind of like going back to the normal in a sense, because I played with that same team my whole youth career. So it was really fun. Um, I did it personally to develop. Um, I thought it would give me the ultimate challenge going into college and play division one women's hockey and I really think I grew as an athlete and as a person that year in particular and so um, it was it was fun it was fun showing up the boys and I mean I got scored on a lot as well but it was a great development year for me and I, um, I still hold a lot of those friendships really close so it was awesome. Well, uh, Riley Tufty told me one time that uh, you were one of the toughest goalies that he ever played against. And he was a first round NHL draft pick whom I know that, that you know well and was here while you were a student athlete. So I'd, I'd, uh, I'd say that you absolutely more than held your own and, and just what a, neat, what a neat story and great experience. Um, I'd be, I want to make sure I remember to ask you to tell the story, of course, about that Olympic moment. We're going to focus on UMD today, but uh, talk about the Olympic experience in Pyeongchang and, and of course, uh, the, 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 the shootout. And, and I remember that because we had, a, I think, a four or six-year-old, a six-week-old, excuse me, at the time. So I was up at all hours, and I really personally appreciated that I had something to watch at these, these strange hours when I was up with... Uh, with our son, Michael, who, who I know that you know and is, has had fun cheering you on. So talk about, first, the experience overall of representing your country and being over there. And then um, we had Emmy Trost, who was a national champion for us in the 1500 outdoor, and she, she kind of walked us through that race. I'd love if you would walk us, give us a little bit of a behind-the-mask kind of uh, interpretation of, of that shootout. Yep. Um, okay, so I made the Olympic team – I believe it was May of the 2017, um, moved to Florida. That's where our centralization and training was held. I moved there in August. So we were there centralized up until uh, January 31st before we flew over to Korea. Um, realized I'm not a fan of hot weather. <laughs> Don't want to go back to Florida anytime soon, but um, it was a great experience training every day. Um, it was really intense, but it was also, we did a lot of fun activities. We were involved with the community. So the whole centralization leading up to the Olympics was great. And then Ultimately, getting into Pyeongchang um, didn't really hit me that I was actually there until the opening ceremonies. Um, that was just a crazy experience, walking kind of arm in arm with some of the, well, the top elite athletes in the country. And then ultimately, the world it was just such a special experience. And it was something that I'll remember walking out onto that stage um, forever. And then some fun facts I always like to say about the village. Um, they basically had everything. There was like a free nail salon, free hair salon. You could get anything you wanted, which was, I was definitely wasn't expecting anything like that. Um, there was a 24 seven free McDonald's. So after games, you, I, you could find me getting a McFlurry or whatever it may be. Um, that was kind of fun for the team. And it was, I get it, they're a sponsor, but it's just really odd that there's a McDonald's in the Olympic village. Um, Samsung's one of the biggest sponsors. So 
they had all their like cool gadgets um, stationed around the village, like those, I don't know if they were the, the creators of these nap pods, but they had like the cool virtual glasses everywhere, these like things that hadn't even been released yet. So that was also really cool. And then um, one of my favorite things also in the village was they had PinQuest. It was an app. Um, so you got like, when you got to the village, you were given probably a hundred like USA pins. I think it might've been USA hockey pins and you go around and exchange pins with people from other um, countries and other athletes. And so I thought that was really cool. And there's an app, it's kind of like Pokemon Go, um, where you go around on your phone and you like locate all these pins. And then once you hit all your checkpoints, you got like this really cool, like booklet of, or not booklet, but like a little showcase um, of pins. And so that was really fun, but enough of that, but um, to the games. Okay. so. Um, so we lost to Canada the first round in preliminary. Um, they had actually beat us many times going into the Olympic Games on the, on the tour. I think we played them about six, seven games in that tour, and we lost a lot of them. And so losing in that first game in the Olympics was kind of diminishing, but it was also kind of motivating because it's tough to beat a team so many times in a row. And we did feel confident in that game despite losing. But um, it, we did feel prepared going into that final game against them despite the loss. Um, so for me, um, I definitely was feeling the nerves, but like going, coming back to the college games, I think I felt more nerves in college than I did in the, <laughs> the Olympics. And I was like, I don't know how I wasn't just a stressed out mess, but I figured it out. <laughs> um, the day of the gold medal game. I did the same routine, went and got coffee from McDonald's, walked back, went on a walk with some of my roommates and teammates there in the village. Um, we did pregame video, all the same routine. We have watched so much video on Canada that there really was nothing left to say. It was just like, you guys are prepared, you're confident, go out and do this thing. Um, and so going to the game, did all my same pregame routine. Everything was fine, little nerves, but also confidence. Um, getting down or going ahead early in that first period was great. Super awesome to get ahead, obviously get that first goal. And then going down two to one after the second period um, was kind of nerve wracking, but we also were confident that we had this. I think um, having a great mixture of veterans and rookies on the team was great to have because we had people who went through that heartbreak, but we also had the rookies who had uh, nothing to lose. So having that balance really put a fire under the team because us rookies really wanted to do this for the veterans on the team who've, you know, gone through the other, other Olympics, not as successful. So, um, and also play for the country um, and the pride of that. But so the Lamru is kind of where the, the show there in the third period and in the shootout, um, Mo scoring that tying goal was huge. And then I think that was with like under seven minutes to go. Um, and then we went into overtime um we ended overtime on a four on three so hockey fans you know that's not great or for the other that's great scoring chances um so that I, that was probably the most stressed out I was in the game was that four on three with like two minutes to go at the end of overtime um I had a save that was pure luck um, it was a complete desperation save it hit like the tip of my stick and barely missed the crossbar on the back door and that moment there, I was like, there's no, we can't lose this game. Um, so then we ultimately went into the shootout. Um, as a goalie, I try to just expect the unexpected. Don't read into things and just react to the play coming at you. Um, Megan Augusta, she scored in the first round against, or the second round, I believe against me. And then she was the one that actually took the shot for the final save. And so everyone was like, were you thinking about what she did before? I was like, nope, because if you get in your own head, things aren't going to go well. So I was just kind of expecting the unexpected, trying to stay calm, stay confident, feed, um, feed off the bench energy from my teammates and just have fun. And ultimately making that final save, people ask me what was going through my mind. And I just say, like, I kind of blacked out. I just remember um, my teammates running at me for the dog pile and the celebration. So. It was truly an amazing experience. Um, it was my dream growing up. I never thought that the gold medal game would come down to a shootout, but as a goalie, I selfishly loved shootouts. So it was just an awesome experience. So where do you keep the gold medal? 
Um, well, right now it's, where is it? It's in my China cabinet here with my parents' house, but I plan on putting it somewhere more safe uh, eventually here. Well, good for you. That's a question that uh, comes up from, from time to time. Um, so then for a period of time, you are the best known goalie in the world. Um, with, with that event and, and so cool to watch that. And I, I've really enjoyed uh, watching how you've grown and developed with your collegiate career, your, your, your Olympic career, and, and just the impressive person that you were, but you've really become so Mads, It's awesome. I want to remember to, to, to compliment you on how you've really taken advantage of these opportunities that sport has provided you. And, and uh, it's, it's, enhanced your leadership skills it's enhanced your your you as a person so you're a great example of why sports is important and and it gives us opportunities to grow and develop and, and congratulations for taking advantage of those um, very serious question so in in uh, the wake of of this incredible international moment you and your teammates and you are often center stage of this stuff um, despite the fact that that some of your teammates were older and had played in a lot more olympics you had the moment you were all over the place the today show ellen fallon everywhere i want to know if if this coffee with the bulldogs moment is is up there with with definitely. all of those things or where does it fall definitely up top five okay. Good. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. So what was your favorite? Was it the Today Show, Jimmy Fallon? What was kind of the coolest? Was it the ESPYs? Like in, in the wake of that moment and all the things that you got to do that um, most people can't even dream of, what, what was the coolest moment that you got to be a part of with your team? Yeah. Um, I think, so I really enjoyed Ellen. Like I grew up watching her show. I really enjoyed like meeting her and being on her show, but I was, I had never been a huge Jimmy Fallon uh, watching or watcher uh, before. And like, I always saw like the clips of his things and thought he was hilarious, but I didn't really know a whole lot about his show. And so going there, he actually made the experience like so like person, personal and welcoming. Like he came backstage to meet us, talk to us for like a half hour after the show. And it was just like a really cool experience. And he was just an awesome guy to talk to. He introduced us to other celebrities that were there for the show. And it was just, that was probably my most memorable one. Like I just really thought it was a cool experience and to be sitting on the couch and talking to him, I was a nervous wreck, but somehow muttered out some words. Um, so that is probably my most memorable one. I also, enjoy just like we did like a kind of a tour around the country with different NHL um, state or arenas and mm -hmm. so we were recognized by a ton of teams and I thought that was really special for us to go out onto the ice do the puck um, do meet and greets with the fans and I really enjoyed that as well um, there's a lot of things we did we did the New York Stock Exchange yeah uh, but yeah Fallon and probably the NHL um, the NHL kind of tour was my favorite Awesome. Good stuff. Well, back to UMD. So you, you come to UMD, uh, obviously a lot of expectations. Um, you, you, you land here in the midst of a coaching change and you get thrown into the net. I think we were in Chestnut Hill playing Boston College and as a true freshman, I think you get thrown right in the net. And then not that long after you help this program get back to the NCAA tournament, have a, I think it was a two and a half overtime game. Um, down at, uh, at at Ritter, talk about some of your your competitive UMD achievements. You know, Stalder's softball bat goal, um, and and that game where you were in the net for a hundred or so minutes. Talk about some of those things. Yeah, um, like you said, first game was out in Boston. Um, Boston was a great team that year, and I remember being so nervous. We ended up losing that game, but it was a special moment to put the Bulldog jersey on and start in the game for my first time and definitely memorable. Um, a lot of moments stand out to me in my sophomore year. Like you said, that double overtime game in Ritter, um, that game also felt very long, not as long as the one that I'll talk about in a second from last year, but yeah, I remember that game, like the shots were like 62, 63 to like 45, like a high shooting game. And it just was, very intense like it was really back and forth like the game could have gone truly either way usually it's one-sided but it was just a fun game to be a part of and I'm sure it was an awesome game to watch as well 
Um, Staller's goal, very controversial, but I was all for it. That was a good goal. Um, I, I mean, got that one right. Yeah, the hand eye that um, it took to make that happen was just just shows how good of an athlete and player Staller was, and it was so awesome to win that game and eventually go to the national tournament. We ended up losing to the Gophers that same team, one zero, but. Again, uh, that game was awesome to play in as well. Could have gone either way too. And um, being a part of the national tournament and getting there was special. Like it was our dream. Ultimately, we didn't get to that championship game, but it was definitely my favorite year as a Bulldog and most memorable one. And um, going into my junior year after the Olympics, uh, I struggled that year. I had coming back from the Olympics, um, I know a lot of a lot of Olympic athletes um, yeah. struggle with this, but I didn't really understand it until I went through it. Um, there was just a lot. I put a lot of pressure on myself to exceed the outside expectations that were on me, and I think I kind of struggled there and affected my play, affected my confidence. But I am, in a sense, grateful for that year because it allowed me to figure out like. Um, well, one, it allowed me to grow as a goalie and become better and more confident going through those experiences. And it also allowed me to get more mentally stronger and tougher and realize, like, if I'm going down in a bad mental uh, spiral, I can know, I know how to get out of it now. And I know I have the confidence to get out of it. And so, but it was, again, a fun year. Um, just uh, didn't do as well as I thought um, or as, as I wanted to. But Going into my senior year, worked really hard in the summer to develop and come in more confident and prepared. Um, a great year. Um, it was fun to, um, I want to say, it was like great because our motto as a senior group was to like leave a legacy, raise the bar. And I really think we were all in this year. Um, we didn't make it to the tournament, but we really left it out there and put our hearts on the line as a senior and as a team as a whole and um, playing in that Bemidji game I think what was it four four OTs three OTs yeah, four yeah. yeah four OTs um it, again that game was back and forth too uh, eventually Bemidji scored in that fourth OT still upset about the goal but came back and got him the next day so it ultimately didn't matter too much but that was the longest game I've ever played in uh in the locker room after the periods the girls would just be sitting there with their legs on the benches elevated and it was kind of just it was really fun um I mean we, there's laughing in the locker room but there was also like competitiveness but um it was just a fun game to play in and Bemidji we always have a good battle with anyway so for it to be against them it was it was a great game and great series um and then going down to Ritter for the final face off um it was tough to lose against Wisconsin. And after that, um, uh, the press conference was very sad. Uh, it's very sad ending the college season. Um, I think for me, I just found um, like better, better vibes and better, just like reflecting on my experience as a Bulldog and how much it allowed me to grow and the memories that I've made and friendships that I've made and the support that I was given. Um, allowed me to look back on my career more in a positive light than sad light in the moment. And um, I feel terrible for the teams that they didn't get to compete in that national tournament. And so it's just a sad situation all around. Um, but yeah, very, very uh, happy with my time as a Bulldog. Well, we love the trajectory of where the program's headed. And I think your senior class, you said it so well, left it all out there. We were so close to the national tournament this past year um, and, and where it's where it's headed. And Coach Kroll and Lou and, and the staff are, are really pulling it in the right direction. So uh, very excited about where it's headed as we get get sports going again and whatever that looks like as we're, we're navigating the COVID world here in, in Duluth and in the college space, just like you are in the professional the Olympic space. But uh, I love the trajectory of our women's hockey program. And I was uh, signing some paperwork for some of our incoming recruits just this morning. And it's, it's really, really exciting to, to see where it's headed. And um, 
you know, a lot of the time you don't get the, the outcome that, that you deserve. But I think the, the groundwork that you've laid in, in a space, women's hockey at the Division One level is even more competitive than ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're such a huge part of our legacy and great representative of the program. So excited for, uh, excited for where we're headed. So mm-hmm. if, if you were selling UMD to a recruit, what would you tell them? I would definitely talk about the arena and the facilities. Um, they're great. I hadn't toured many. Um, actually, Duluth was my first school that I toured. And so, like, stepping into the rink, I was like, wow. Um, I only toured one other school after that before I made my decision my sophomore year of high school. And I just remember being so blown away by the rink and the facilities and the campus. I really enjoyed that it was all connected, so I didn't have to do a lot of walking, um, underground tunnels, um, everything. It was just really a great um, showcase of the campus. Um, also, I, I know you said there's a um, coaching change. I committed to different coaches and who I played for, but I do really strongly respect the coaches and I would definitely talk about them and their leadership and how they impacted me in my career. Um, I think the Bulldog program is in great hands moving forward and hopefully we will get back to that national championship and tournament in the near future. Like you said, I know there's some great uh, Bulldogs coming in as well here from the cities that I've seen personally and I'm excited. Um, And then the biggest selling point probably for me was the community and what Duluth has to offer away from the facilities and the rink. Uh, It's just a great city. Um, There's so many things to do. I love the outdoor feel, um, Canal Park down by the water. And then I knew it was a big hockey community coming in. And so um, playing in front of the fans, uh, it was always a great experience day in and day out. And they really like no other fans that I had uh, played against, I guess, in other rinks. And I thought it was always the best to play at home in front of the home crowd. And they always uh, did a great showing and supported us well. So those would be my selling points. For sure. Well, we might uh, we might be enlisting you as much as the NCAA rules will allow to uh, to help us pitch some some future bulldogs because that was a great synopsis. Uh, you talked about your experience in the business school, and I, I know you you uh, you had uh, did well in in the marketing program. But um, talk a little bit about what getting your degree, despite the fact that your ceremony was virtual. Talk about what that meant. So you put two years in. You took a year off. You had to reacclimate to college and. And um, without giving away any of your academic record, you did really well, and we're very proud of what you've done academically. But talk about what it meant to uh, to get that degree. Yeah, um, I always wanted to go into the business school, um, so I knew Duluth had a great business school with LSBE, and so I was excited to enroll. And then ultimately, uh, the classes I really enjoyed all the classes. It actually made me like interested in school because high school, no, like I was interested in going. But the classes and the um, commitment that LSBE had towards really giving the students a great education, making sure that they learned the material by having fun was um, great and really made me interested and wanted to pursue um, a career in marketing and I want to go into, uh, I graduated with business marketing. Um, I want to eventually go into the sports marketing side of things once I hang up the skates. Um, uh, Getting the degree meant a ton to me because I do eventually want to pursue that degree and I don't always just want to be known as that goalie. I want to do make a name for for outside of hockey as well and I think LSB and UMD have prepared me for that and um, Yeah, it was tough being a student athlete, but it taught me many life skills moving forward, Uh, time management being the biggest one. And um, yeah, grateful grateful for all those experiences, all those late nights trying to cram homework and Sundays trying to cram homework after games. So but that's good stuff Maddie I mean I, I I've given that you were around for basically five years with the Olympic year in the middle and the fact that I had the opportunity to to get to know you in the classroom a little bit and help you navigate some of the NCAA stuff around um around your 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 Olympic stuff I, I've got the opportunity to get to know you probably as well as I get to know any student athlete and you are so much more than that goalie and you've got a lot of runway ahead of you and I look forward to seeing you as the chief marketing officer of of some sort of professional sports entity or, or general manager and, and um, 
that's uh, that's certainly something that I've got a lot of confidence. I've told you this before. I'm happy to be a reference for you. I'd put my name behind you any day, and it's it's good stuff. And you know, as I've said earlier, you're a huge part of the Bulldog legacy, which in the hockey space and in so many of our sports, but particularly in the hockey space, what our men's and women's programs represent at the professional Olympic levels is is uh, a pretty special thing. And you're a big piece of that, uh, particularly on the USA side. Obviously, we have connections all over the world in the Olympic space, but um, in, in the USA side. So the, the, tell me and tell the group a little bit, what did it mean for you to do that with a teammate? I mean, you're, you're over there with Sid Morin, who is from Minnetonka. You're from, you're from Andover. And, the two, and you're both Bulldogs. And you go all the way across the globe, and you have this special moment together. T- talk about what that was like. <clears throat> yeah, so um... – Sid joined the team a little bit later in Central mm-hmm. Education, and I was super excited. Uh, Sid and I were close in college as well, so I was super excited for her to join the team. And, um, yeah, she was always a great friend. Um, and then we ultimately were roommates in the Olympic Village. So that was also uh, great because it was a sense of comfort and, like, a really foreign area, unknown area. Um, and then sharing that experience of winning was super special. Um, we both received so much support from UMD and the athletic administration. So thank you for that. So uh, we got a little, little like get together and a little party when we got back. And That's we, right. That was fun. I used to have a picture from that. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. It was very special and super awesome to see all the support from the school and the community. And um, it was just great. I really like she had the assist on the first goal. So it was super awesome for her. I was super excited for her. And it was just great to experience winning gold together um, as teammates again. So. Good stuff. Um, and, and it's great to see her continue to do well and, and uh, again, be part of that, that legacy that we've got. Um, so if, if you had to say, what, is it, what does it mean to be a Bulldog? If you had to define what it means to be a Bulldog, why it's different than being, I, I won't pick on any school in particular, but why it's different than being some other kind of, of animal, what's it mean to you to be a Bulldog? You're going to drop that on me right now. What's it mean to be a Bulldog? I could go at this many different angles. Um, So for me to be a Bulldog, um, I'm going to base it off off the hockey side specifically because that's what I'm familiar with. Um, It's truly embracing all aspects of being an elite athlete. So it's being involved in the community, um, supporting other teams, obviously. Um, and then specifically on the team side, it's being a great teammate, being motivated, developing your own elite work worth, work ethic, holding yourself accountable, holding each other accountable, um, just giving all your whole team support and being coachable. I mean, there's so many different aspects, but just going day in and day out of being an elite athlete, whether it's nutrition, how, it's you carry, how, it's, um, how you carry yourself in the community, at school, I'm just wearing, always wearing the bulldog with pride and knowing that you represent so much more than just what you're doing on the ice. So, Well, I promised I wouldn't put you on the spot today, but I did right there. And you, you handled that very well. I think that's an exceptional definition of what it means to be a bulldog. And you, you represent in so many ways uh, that excellence in the classroom community and competition piece. And I really believe that it, these are long-standing traditions that we've had here, and you, you've embraced and lived them. But succeeding academically, giving back in the community, being engaged in the community, I think all of that feeds the competitive success. Because mm-hmm. if you're taking care of things off the ice, you're going to do well on the ice. And, and being successful in the classroom and, and earning degrees like so many of our athletes do. And Mads, I don't know if you know this, but this past spring was the highest single semester GPA that our student athletes uh, average GPA of three, four, four we've ever had. And you contributed to that. So well done. Um, But it also shows that our student athletes really embraced the adversity of COVID and took that as an opportunity to do very well academically. Uh, And then I think another piece is being engaged in the community. And I know that you are, I remember um, right after the Olympics, you were participating in a health fair and you've always tried to do things that give back to your local community in the Minnesota community, the hockey community, And that's so important. I think particularly for athletes, it it helps stay grounded. It helps remind you that there's more than sports. And sometimes you can get so wrapped up and maybe coming off the Olympics, it it can get super intense and having Mm -hmm. some experiences outside of sport to bring you back down a little bit. 
and, and sometimes the faculty and the coaches get mad at me when I say this, but getting some time away from your coaches and away from the faculty, right? And just, just to not get overwhelmed by the pressures of your sport because so many of the programs we have here are elite level programs. And you look at volleyball and football and men's hockey and women's hockey and our track program and now our basketball programs and our softball program, you know, so on average, half of our programs every year going to the NCAA tournament. So I think you really nailed that having some time away from sport can help you be more successful in the sport. So uh, you are mature, well mature beyond your years. <laughs> Thank you. So let me ask, the, this will be kind of our wrap up question here. What advice would you give Maddie Rooney rolling into Duluth uh, in, in August of, of her freshman year coming up I-35? What would you, five plus years later, what would you tell yourself? Uh, it goes by too fast. So <laughs> really never take like those early practices, those long practices, even the conditioning practices, never take those for granted because you're going to miss having that college routine. You're going to miss the locker room memories. You're going to miss the road, the road trips and all the team things that I had to experience. Um, I wish I would have just gone into every day with, not that I didn't, but more of like, like this isn't going to last forever kind of attitude. So um, what else? I wish, I don't know, I wish we would have got a national championship. <laughs> um, but that will be coming in the next uh, couple of years here. And I'm excited to embrace my new role from the stands cheering the Bulldogs. Love on. it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you're always welcome. You let us know when you're in town. I'm sure the, the team would love to hear from you. I, um, you're, a, again, a huge piece of the legacy, and you've been such a great Bulldog. We're proud of you. And one of the things that I try to remind programs that have such high expectations is when you expect to be a national champion, when you expect to have an elite-level program, you're going to have disappointment. Nobody wins it all every single year. Even with what the men's program has done lately, as much as we all want that to continue forever, and we're trying like heck to make sure that we stay defending champions. Even COVID gave us one more, one more year of it, so we're still flying that number one flag over campus, although I have gotten some feedback from some people that don't think we should fly it, but I'm, I'm flying it anyway. Um, it, that won't continue forever. So with high expectations can come some disappointment and kudos to you for having those expectations, being part of a program that has those expectations. And I agree that uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be there um, sooner than later. And thanks for being a piece of, of our women's hockey elite uh, legacy. And we wish you the best. I look forward to seeing you in the cities when we're allowed to be more than six feet or less than six feet apart at some point here soon. And uh, keep doing what you're doing. Let us know how we can help. And uh, as always, go Bulldogs. Uh, as we wrap up, folks, um, you'll get an email after the fact. If you respond to that, you'll be entered to win some Duluth coffee. Maddie, you do not need to enter to win. We're going to send this to you anyway. Um, thank you for your time today. It's uh, certainly great to catch up and good to see you. And uh, we'll be in touch soon. Shoot me a text if you need anything, my friend. And uh, look forward to seeing you on the ice again. Awesome. Great talking to you and thanks for having me. You bet, Mads. Take care. See y'all.